Hey, what's going on guys? Log.zip here, and this is How to Minecraft, and this episode we are going to be making ourselves a farm. But first off, if you missed last episode, first of all, I don't blame you, because I uploaded at 1 a.m. my time. Uh, we worked on the bottom floor of my new house. If you missed that episode, it was a short one, it was only like 10 minutes long or something. Go watch that first. Um, link to it is, well, you can just find it on my channel. It's going to be like right there. <laughs> Anyways, this is How Do Minecraft 1.8 SP Server. Host some of your favorite YouTubers, although I'm the only one currently on. If you're still enjoying the series, make sure you drop a like for How to Minecraft. It means so much to have your support. And of course, when I fix my computer, which is probably in the next couple days here, you'll be able to watch the Antics live over at twitch.tv slash log.zip, where I usually, and at one point, used to stream every single day. But yes, we're going to be working on a melon and pumpkin farm today. Now, the design was originally by Mumbo Jumbo. However, my homeboy, Vesset, or Vaket, I don't really know, uh, redesigned it to make it just a little bit more efficient. Here are all of the supplies you're going to need for it. And if you want to skip to the tutorial, I've probably included an area where you can find the time that it's going to be skipped on because we actually need to do a couple other things first. Namely, I want to get my I want to get an efficiency five shovel. So we're going to head back to our base because it still has the enchanting area set up there. And I'm thinking we're going to put the melon right over here. There's going to be a little farm area where I have all my farms. I hope that's where I want it to be because I want all the farms to be in the same spot, but I don't really know if that's where I want it to be because I'm so wishy-washy. But we're gonna go ahead and head over to the um, area right now and do that. Oh, and while I'm heading over, I was reading over the comments that you left on the last video because I did ask for your feet. <laughs> nice. I did ask for you guys' feedback on what you guys maybe wanna see in episodes of How to Minecraft and I wanted to address a couple things. First of all, I forgot to put in my headphones so you Right here in Echo right now. Let me go ahead and put those in. In the meanwhile, hold on a second. I'm just plugging it in. But what I wanted to say is a couple things. Um, first of all, I am already allied with a certain side on the server. I'm actually part of Team TBNR. I guess that's Preston, Kenny, Choco. Um, I'm with those guys. I'm not part of the Salty Lagoon Squad or whatever they're calling themselves. Um, second off, I noticed a lot of you guys were commenting saying, we want to see you play with other people on the server. And honestly, so would I. Um, the issue has been, uh, the issue has been this from the start. And I'm going to try and uh, be doing this while I'm um, working on my uh, shovel creating. Um, I'm kind of like, I don't really know. I don't. I should say I don't really talk to the rest of the guys. Um, like they all talk with each other. Like I kind of, I got I got invited to this server by Mitch, and I'm closer to Mitch than anyone else um, on the server right now. And he doesn't even play on the server anymore, Bayesian. And the rest of the dudes, I I've never really recorded with them too often. Um, you know, I'll do maybe a mini game or a map every so often with them, but for the most part, we don't really play together. And what that ended up meaning for me was um, I'm not usually the first person uh, to come to mind in their heads when, hey, who should I play with? You know what I mean? So I usually, you know, I don't, I don't get invited to things that often. And I'm not saying that's their fault. It's not their fault. And they're not mean or anything for doing it. But that's just the reality of it is I don't really know these guys the way they all know each other. And as a result, that can kind of make um, recording with them something that's not possible so I'm hoping once you know PvP and stuff starts kicking off a lot more frequently that will um, bring me I guess closer to everybody and uh, in addition I, I actually spoke to Choco about this and he wants to you know start doing stuff with me as well kind of you know hey I'll record with you dude because Choco's a cool guy ooh fortune 3 well, that's kind of useless for a shovel, I suppose. Um, so that's that's the main reason I don't really record the other dudes is they don't really know me, and I'm not. There we go. Now, hopefully, hopefully it stays uh, with the. If, yes, sweet. Okay, so now we can combine these. Oh, that'd be great if we got. Uh, I don't know something. Else. Okay, so efficiency four. I'm breaking three. Dope. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking just uh, combine these right now, and get ourselves an efficiency five shovel. Now, how many levels would this cost? That would be 13 levels to do that. Or only 11 levels to do that. Is that what we... 
Is that what we want to do, though? No, let's actually, let me figure out what I want to do with my levels real quick. Well, on our very last leather helmet, aka we got down to level 29, we see the prop 4 there just haunting me. So we're one level away from potentially being able to get a prop 4 unbreaking 3 helmet, and that would give me... <laughs> Look at all the helmets, they're dancing around. Shut up! Don't look at me like that. Um, if we if we were to have gotten that, we could combine it with the other helmet that's in my ender chest to get the best helmet. But that's just not the way the world works sometimes. However, now that we're down to this level, I figure... Uh, yeah. No, I'm going to go get one level real quick. Alright, we just got level 30. Helmets, they still be dancing around. We had a little run in with a witch. Don't worry about it. So I really, really, really... I want you to have prot th or unbreaking three. I need you to have unbreaking three. Otherwise, you're just another useless helmet. Hey, hey, that's actually a really good helmet. Hey, hey, that is. That's a good helmet. Hmm. Well, now we can combine it with the other helmet, and we'll have ourselves the ultimate helmet. But now, in fact, is that in my ender chest? I, that might very well be in my ender chest. It looks like. It looks like, is this, no, where's my respiration? Oh, I guess it is this one, okay. So I wanna see what this will be when we combine, let me see, so. That plus, ooh, that's expensive, but that would, wait, it's gotta go this way. Oh, that's a lot cheaper, see, look. That gives us prop four, unbreaking three, respiration three, aqua affinity one, and that would cost us 18 levels because I would want to uh, name it. And then how much was the shovel again? So that 18 levels, that would leave us with only nine levels to 11. You know what, let's hold off on the helmet. It's good that we know that we have it though, because I do want to do this, because we're going to be doing a lot of building. So Diamond Shovel, you are now going to be called Diggy Hole. <laughs> Diggy Hole. Um, Sure, why not? Diggy hole. There we go. So 15 levels left. We need three more in order to combine the helmets. But now we can get to actually working on the farm, I think. All right, guys, we're back. And we have all the supplies we need as well as the area we need dug out. Uh, dug out. Right. So in order to make this melon farm, you're going to need a few things. It's all in this little area, this 4 by 3 slot area. You're going to need... A lot of blocks, I didn't put a number on it. You're gonna need a lot of blocks. This is gonna be the building block, aka like the basis, the skeleton of the contraption, what you're gonna be putting all the torches and redstone on and what have you and so forth. You're going to also need for every layer and each layer can have either a combination of six pumpkins or melons. So on that, you're going to need 10 torches, 10 redstone torches and six pistons as well as 10 grass slash dirt per layer. We're going to be doing three layers, so that's 30 dirt, 18 pistons, and 30 redstone torches. For the clock, you're also going to need four more redstone torches. You're going to need a block of redstone, 12 redstone dust, two comparators, three redstone repeaters, and five hoppers, and two more hoppers for the etho clock. You're also going to need a stack of any item. That's going to be part of the etho clock itself. You're also going to need to dig yourself out a five by six area, although the clock is going to take up an additional amount of space. So I recommend building a five by 13 area. I went ahead and did a six by 13 area just so that I can walk around as well. But if you're looking for compactness, that is what you're gonna to wanna to do. So it's five or six in this case, and then 13 down. We're gonna be putting the clock, the etho clock over here underground so it stays kinda of out of the way, makes it look nice and pretty. And then as for layers, each uh, layer that gives you melons and pumpkins is two layers high, and you're gonna need a minimum of two layers, uh, or a minimum of four layers because the clock will take up two of its own in terms of height. So minimum uh, is going to be five by 13 by four, but we're gonna go ahead and start placing all the blocks now. So at the back of your little building area, the first thing you're going to do is make the etho clock, which we've made once before on the series. You're gonna take two hoppers and have them funneling into each other. See how they're connected right here? Eventually you're gonna put down a stack of some type of item in here. It doesn't matter as long as it's stackable up to 64. Uh, we're gonna leave that for now. You're also going to need two comparators uh, leading in this direction outside from the hoppers. From there, you're gonna also need to put down two more blocks like this and then on either side of those, one dust, another dust, 
and then a sticky piston going that direction and a sticky piston going that direction finally you'll need your block of redstone and we'll just show you what happens if we put something in here now so you'll see this is the etho clock being made it will cycle through and do a signal in this case see signal off on so that is step one all right, step two is next, and I totally derped on this, by the way. You need five torches, not four, so if you if I didn't correct myself before, you need a total of five torches for the clock, plus the ten for every layer. But next step is the uh, part that is going to invert the farm, uh, the farming portion when we eventually make it. So right here, you're going to put down a sticky piston. On top of that, you can put down a block of any choosing, or you could do a regular piston and put a sand or gravel block. I'm choosing not to do that because sometimes the server can get a little bit finicky with how it does gravity. Now right behind that, you're going to want to place down a repeater on a three tick delay. So right click it twice a dust leading right into that and then another block. Now on the end of that other block is going to be a redstone torch like that. Now uh, from that torch you're also going to put down right here another dust and another dust and on the sides of those you're going to want to place down one and another block on top of those you're going to want to place down two torches. I should have dug this up for the record so you're going to want to uh, clear this area as well. However we can continue to press on from there on the other sides of this block a repeater on a one tick delay aka don't touch it another repeater on a one tick delay aka do not touch it and then three dust on both ends so one two three one two three and then finally another block there another block there with another torch there and another torch there now look what happens when we eventually place it now it's supposed to be a stack but we're just going to do 10 so you can see how often the whole thing updates. So we'll put 10 in there and you'll see. Watch, check it out, check it out, check it out. So this will get pushed up and that will power this temporarily. It will invert all of those torches. Now when this untor uh, when that switches again, it didn't do it. So it's like a double pulse lengthener. So every so often you'll get the torch invert, but even when it switches back, doesn't invert it. So every other switch, it will invert. Now this is gonna send power to the rest of the pistons that we push up, which will eventually push uh, grown melons and pumpkins into a little water area and a hopper collection zone. So that is that step. Now these next couple steps are us actually building the farm area where the melons and the pumpkins are growing. We're gonna break it up into slow pieces because I suck and you guys might. So we're gonna take it just slow so that everybody can follow along. Really simple, just place a block over each redstone torch you already had placed and then on top of that place down another redstone torch. This area we're building right now is the first half of the because each section like I said is actually two layers tall this is that first layer of two layers so it's gonna go like that if the clock were to be running right now obviously this would invert the signal every uh, double piston pushed back and forth and this is eventually gonna cause some pistons to move so now we'll build the next layer right above this all right, so just an update for you. I dug everything out an extra four layers deeper. I wanted everything to be more concealed, so that's why it's, it might look a little bit differently. Now, the next tip you're gonna wanna do is on this same layer, you're going to line in between the torches that block of your choice, and on this layer is the same layer where all of your grass is going to be. We're gonna till it last, but I forgot to mention, you're also going to need a hoe. <laughs> Not that kind. Uh, so what you're gonna do here is just along the inside, just like that, you're gonna not have the the two inside filled because this is where the water is going to eventually be flowing. There's gonna be some hoppers we're gonna place last down there, so just keep that in mind. Just hold on to the five hoppers for now, and this is where everything is going to be planted. Now you're also going to need on this area the six pistons, and you're going to line them as such right along the middle of each one. This is going to eventually push the melons and pumpkins which are going to be growing here. Along each corner is where your various plants are going to be growing. So this is a layer done. Although I guess I guess we can go ahead and um, plant them up now, though I don't know. Obviously they won't grow until you've placed said seeds. We're gonna do an even amount of each one on each side. Did that just until, are you kidding me? So do melons on this side, melons on that side, and then pumpkins and pumpkins. And obviously you'll want some bone meal as well to grow them from their initial state. So just like that, oh, it's lovely, it's beautiful. So that is this layer done. 
and then there's one more layer and I'm going to show you exactly how to place all the torches and stuff in a moment here. Torch placement is going to require blocks uh, starting to be built up on the, another, on the next layer. So just go ahead and place some blocks like that for the time being. We'll do the second layer separately, but again, I, like I said, I'm going a little bit slow here. Uh, essentially, you're going to want each uh, piston to be powered like that. Uh, you don't want uh, them on the opposite side. So for the for the the five wide area, you're only going to be having pistons on either end like that. But to power these ones, it's going to be on both sides, just like this. You can see in place like this. So on this side, only one. And you're also going to want some torches down for adequate lighting to make sure that the plants are growing. So. Redstone torch, regular torch, but then redstone torch there. And then on the inside for the longer ones, you're gonna want them on both sides as well. And once again, a torch goes right there. So once this signal gets inverted, you will see that it will quickly push the pumpkins and the melons as they are growing here and eventually collect into that hopper system that we're gonna have right below. From this point, the whole contraption is actually stackable. So uh, the only difference is you'll notice down here, this torch is on the block below it completely, whereas when you start stacking up, you're actually gonna wanna place it on the side of the block on top. So uh, for example, uh, now it would be instead of right here, you're gonna wanna place it along this side. And then from there, like I said, it is literally just a repeat of what we've already done, but I'll make it again just so that, you know, just so that we're completely squared off and you know exactly what's going on. So you'd have the four right there and then another torch going on on that side. Then you've got the four once again, another torch there, three of these blocks in between, and then three of these blocks in between as well. You of course then would have your ten dirt along the inside right here, till them so that you have the uh, melon and pumpkins on each corner right there. Boom, 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 boom. Where the heck? Of my seeds, man. I uh, will have pumpkins or melon. I think that's what I did. Melons on that side, then pumpkins on this side, and then of course, bone meal them up. As you can see, do it just like that. I hope I don't run out of bone meal, man. Okay, perfect. And then finally, once again, get your pistons along the middle of every single portion, like that. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. So that layer is once again completed. And then you would simply do the same thing you did before, again, with the uh, torch going on only one portion here, powering only that one, just like that. And then over here on the other side, just like that. And then a regular, regular old light would go, uh, not there, excuse me, but on the other side here. And then on the insides, got those constantly being powered as well, just like that. And then bada boom, bada bing, the final step would simply be adding one more layer and then along the inside, placing your two water buckets right on the inside here, allowing for these guys to start growing because they are fertilized or what have you. So I think I'm gonna leave this top portion bare and we'll just do the two layer. Now nah, I'll just finish the third layer, I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and we are now three layers tall. Not too bad. Uh, optional, but you could obviously uh, roof off the top if that so interests you, and I'm simply going to do that so it's a little bit nicer looking and just so that any pumpkins or melons don't accidentally get knocked upwards somehow. You know, just taking those precautions. I might recommend you do the same. Now, final step, just like that, right in the middle there, place down your water, and you'll see... It flows all the way down and almost certainly messed up all of my yup, 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 wow. Okay, real final step here. This is actually simple enough. All you're going to be doing is placing a block here so that you can place hoppers going in a down, no, not like that. You'll have to fix them, but they're supposed to be going in a downwards direction. Um, so eventually, in fact, I'm just gonna remove that freaking wall. On the plush, you can see that it's actually working, which is always nice. It's always nice to know something I've built is working properly. So um, I guess what we'll do is for the actual final step, we're gonna work a little bit backward just so that the hoppers don't give us any trouble at all. Uh, you're going to place down a double chest and this is obviously going to be ex expandable with more hoppers if you need it to be. So simply put, you're gonna wanna have one hopper leading into your first chest right here. No, just going down like that, have two more hoppers leading into that first one and then obviously this will eventually funnel all the items in. And then for your final step, 
have the hoppers going down just like that. So you don't even need that dirt there. Now what's eventually gonna happen is once we place this water back, so we fixed up the redstone. It's all nice and beautiful now. And then the real final last step, I promise, <laughs> is to light up the area. No, that's not part of the step, but you may as well do that. Is like I said, to place that final stack of whatever item of your choosing. Do we really not have a full 64 stack? <laughs> Hey, I forgot how to pick X. So place a full stack of something in there, and that is gonna eventually set the whole thing off and should start collecting. And just like that, you can see it is doing its job. I actually picked up a pumpkin on my way down fixing it before when the redstone was. But simply put, that is the automatic melon and pumpkin farm. F fairly compact, uh, does its job properly, doesn't really require many resources actually um next episode at the start of next episode i'll probably have this concealed in a nice little house or whatever but this is our first farm we've made in our new area and that means next episode we're going to continue work on the house more than likely so once again a huge shout out and thank you to both mumbo jumbo and Vicette or vaquette or whatever both their channels will be linked in the description below i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of how to minecraft if you did and you want to see more or if you just want to help support the series then as always a rating is always appreciated on the video and if you want to catch the Annex Live, you're going to have to do it over at twitch.tv slash log.zip where I stream every single day when my computer is working. It's not currently working. And someone is blowing up my phone right now. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, we'll catch you for the next episode. See ya.